What if gorillas were introduced into North America? What if you stepped outside tomorrow and saw a gorilla in your backyard? Sounds unbelievable, right? Gorillas don't roam wild in North America, but what if they did? How would these giant apes cope with the unfamiliar forests and seasons? Would they thrive or struggle? Would other animals welcome them or fear them? And what about us humans? How would we react to gorillas as new neighbors? This thought experiment is as wild as it gets, but it's a great way to learn about gorillas and their needs. Let's swing into this imaginary scenario and explore what might happen if a breeding population of gorillas found a home in North America. Could gorillas survive the North American climate? Gorillas are native to the dense tropical forests of Central Africa, where it's warm and humid year-round. In North America, however, they'd face very different weather. Winters in much of North America get cold, really cold, with snow and freezing temperatures. That's a big problem for gorillas. Zookeepers note that gorillas are used to temperatures around 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 to 27 degrees Celsius, and they start needing heated indoor shelters when it drops to about 45 degrees Fahrenheit, 7 degrees Celsius. In the wild, they would have a nice heated barn or warm rocks to sit on. If gorillas were released in places with chilly winters, like Canada or the northern US, they'd likely shiver and struggle once winter hits. They could even get sick, since cold, wet climates can lead to serious illnesses like pneumonia in gorillas. So, where could gorillas actually survive? in North America, probably only in the warmest regions. Think of the far southern parts of the continent, for example, southern Florida or perhaps parts of the Gulf Coast and maybe some areas of Mexico. These places stay warmer year-round, a bit more like the gorilla's African home. In fact, some wildlife experts speculate that the swampy forests of Florida's Everglades or Louisiana bios might be among the few US places where gorillas could live year-round without freezing. Even there, a cold snap could be dangerous. A surprise frost in Florida might leave a gorilla troop huddling for warmth, wishing for a blanket. Over time, if a group of gorillas managed to survive through seasons, they might adapt a little. But adapting to freezing winters would be a huge challenge. More likely, North American gorillas would stick to balmy regions or perish in the cold. What would they eat and where would they live? Surviving the climate is one thing, finding food and shelter is another. Gorillas are predominantly herbivores, meaning they eat plants. In African rainforests, food is abundant year-round, but North America's forests have different plants and seasonal cycles. Could gorillas find enough to eat? In a warm southern forest, they might be in luck. During spring and summer, there's plenty of foliage and fruit. Gorillas are big eaters. An adult male can eat tens of pounds of vegetation a day. They would likely wander the forests or swamps, nibbling on whatever edible plants they find. They might discover new favorites among North American flora, perhaps snacking on muscadine grapes, wild figs, or succulent marsh plants. In our hypothetical scenario, over generations, they could even adapt to new diets. In a fictional example, escapee gorillas in Florida were imagined to start eating things like mulberry leaves and even pine needles, basically becoming less picky than their African cousins. The toughest time would be winter, even in the south. Many trees and bushes lose their leaves, and fresh fruit is scarce in winter. Gorillas don't hibernate, so they'd have to forage or starve. They might resort to eating bark, stems, or pine needles to get by. Not exactly a gourmet gorilla diet, but in Africa, gorillas have been observed eating tree bark and seeds when fruits are not available. Still, a long winter famine could be deadly. The gorillas might survive by sticking to areas with evergreen plants or by spreading out to find food, but it would be a struggle. As for shelter, gorillas don't build permanent dens. They sleep in nests made made of leaves and branches, often on the ground or in low trees, and they make a new nest each evening. North American gorillas would do the same, bedding down under the stars each night. In bad weather, they try to find natural shelter in thick bushes or forests. Neighbors in the wild, gorilla versus other North American animals. What about the other wild animals already living in North America? How would they react to gorillas moving in? Gorillas are strong and bulky. Adult males can weigh over 300 to 400 pounds, 136 to 180 kilograms, and have immense strength. In their native Africa, gorillas actually have few natural predators. Thanks to their size and the protection of the troop, almost no animal hunts gorillas except humans. Occasionally, a leopard might prey on a lone baby gorilla, but big silverbacks even scare leopards away. 
In North America, there are no leopards, but there are other predators. Could a mountain lion or a bear threaten a gorilla? It's possible. A cougar is a stealthy predator, but it would likely think twice before attacking a full-grown gorilla. One swipe from a gorilla's arm could send a cougar running. Bears might be a different story. Black bears share forests in many warm areas. They mostly eat berries and roots, so they might just avoid gorillas and mind their own business. However, a big grizzly bear could be dangerous if a gorilla wandered into its territory. A grizzly is larger and armed with sharp claws. Who would win in a face-off? It's hard to say, but you can watch our video Grizzly vs Grizzly Bear to find out. Find the link in the description. It might be best if they steered clear of each other. Perhaps a curious gorilla would beat its chest and roar to scare a bear off, and the bear, not used to seeing such a creature, might retreat. Other smaller animals would likely leave gorillas alone. Wolves hunt in packs, but they usually target deer or elk, not giant apes. A pack of wolves might menace a young gorilla if it strayed, but an adult silverback would be a formidable opponent, likely able to fend them off. Alligators in Florida could pose a threat if gorillas approached water. A large gator might lurk where gorillas drink. In Africa, crocodiles occasionally can attack unwary animals, so a North American gorilla troop would have to be careful near the water's edge, just like they would back home. On the flip side, gorillas are generally gentle plant eaters, so they wouldn't be hunting or severely harming other large animals. Still, gorillas might compete with native herbivores for food. For example, deer or elk also browse on leaves and shrubs. Would gorillas gobble up a lot of the food that deer rely on? Possibly in some areas, yes. Gorillas feeding in an area might strip a bunch of vegetation, leaving less for deer during a tough season. One thing's for sure, gorillas would be an odd presence in the North American wild. Gorillas and humans, new neighbors, new challenges. Now consider human reactions. If gorillas were introduced into North America, people would definitely notice. Gorillas are endangered and protected in Africa, so seeing one strolling through an American or Canadian forest would be headline news. Would we treat them as dangerous invaders or as animals to protect? It might be a mix of both. On one hand, gorillas are generally peaceful and shy around humans. They're not out to attack people, Wild gorillas usually avoid humans if they can. However, gorillas are very strong and can be dangerous if they feel threatened. If a person stumbled across a wild gorilla in North America and got too close or startled it, the gorilla might feel the need to defend itself or its family. Wildlife officials would have a tough job. Gorillas being non-native might be considered an invasive species that doesn't belong. Usually authorities try to remove or relocate invasive animals to protect the ecosystem. We might see new laws or emergency actions perhaps creating a wildlife reserve for the gorillas, or attempts to capture and return them to Africa or to sanctuaries. It would likely spark a big public debate and a lot of media attention. Picture TV news saying, gorillas in Georgia? Officials scrambled to respond. There could even be tourism interest. Just as people travel to Africa to see gorillas, folks might flock to try to spot North America's newfound gorilla population. Though this could be dangerous without the strict rules that parks in Africa have for gorilla encounters. A new North American gorilla? Let's step even further into speculation. What if gorillas not only survived, but actually established a stable breeding population in North America? Fast forward 50 or 100 years in this hypothetical future. We might have North American gorillas that are a little different from their African ancestors. Over generations, they could adapt slightly to their new environment. Perhaps they grow a bit more fur to cope with cooler nights. Maybe they adjust their diet to local plants completely, and their behavior shifts to be more cautious around the predators and people of North America. They might range over larger areas than in Africa to find enough food, since resources can be more spread out in temperate forests. It's possible they would form smaller family groups if food is limited, or come closer to towns during harsh seasons, which could lead to a unique semi-urban ape lifestyle. While that's far-fetched, animals do sometimes adapt in surprising ways when introduced to new places. However, even in the rosiest scenario, the number of gorillas would probably remain small. Unlike invasive species like rabbits or feral pigs that breed quickly, gorillas reproduce very slowly. Females give birth to only one baby about every four to five years. A gorilla boom is not in the cards, so we wouldn't see hordes of gorillas taking over North American forests. Instead, we might see a few family groups managing to hang on in remote swamps or forests. They could become a protected curiosity, 
Perhaps scientists would study how they cope, and conservationists might even support them as a backup population in case things go badly for gorillas in Africa. In a dramatic twist of imagination, one could even wonder if North America's gorillas might evolve into a distinct subspecies or species over many centuries of isolation. They might get nicknames like the Bayou Gorilla or American Gorilla. Of course, all this is speculative fun. In reality, introducing gorillas to North America would not be a good idea. It could harm the gorillas and upset the ecosystem. But asking what if helps us appreciate these incredible animals. We learn that gorillas are gentle giants with very specific needs. A warm habitat, lots of plant food, social family life, and protection from threats. Take them out of their African element, and both they and the environment would face big challenges. Still, it's fascinating to imagine a world where you might look up in a North American tree and see a gorilla peering back at you. 